Welcome to All Nations International Fellowship. We invite you to worship with us and receive the bread of life in today's message. So last week, Pastor Kim started a series called Radical Faith, Radical Faith. And we looked at some examples of radical faith and how faith starts out small, but it grows bigger. That Everyone's been given a measure of faith, and it's up to us to, to hear the word and to let it grow in our hearts. Be, and then we get to a level where we can really see mountains move. Amen. But we would need to grow our faith. And we talked about how one key to that is to have like an anointed imagination and use the imagination that God has given us to see miracles happen in our lives. Amen. So we're going to continue on this idea of radical faith. I've written on here a new beginning because this is a new start for us. Come on, we made it through COVID. We made it through all the restrictions. We made it through online. We're just going to go and jump in here by faith and uh, believe God. Amen. So praise God. It's a new beginning, a new day. And I'd like to start before we get to our text here today and start with this idea to help us see what a radical faith might look like. And uh, Kim used the example of Noah last week, and I'm, I'm going to keep going on that trend today. But, you know, Noah, I, and actually I'm writing a book on Noah because uh, he's amazing to me. Uh, but Noah, we don't know much about him before the ark. All we know is the Bible says that he had God's favor. We don't know what his occupation was. He might have been a farmer or a herdsman or a trader of some kind, uh, something like that. We don't know, horticulturalist or something like that, just tending to the to the ground in the fields or something like that. Uh, but we, we really don't know. But God, I think this is amazing, but God, under command and anointing, transformed whatever Noah had been before into a engineer, a shipwright, farmer, zoologist, and all of these things. He had to go from what he knew, his small world of just, you know, his family and the people that were in you know the Mesopotamian area, and he had to go and be transformed by faith and what God called him to do in the command that God gave him into uh, you know uh, the very first you know shipwright. You know he had he had to know farming to feed all the animals. He had to know how to tend to the animals. God transformed him in a radical way from from this you know small surrounding to this major thing. So uh, that is all in my book. You can read someday. Amen. Uh, but I'd like that to, uh, to take a look here. You know, we are in a transformation process. We're in a new beginning, right? We're, we're starting. We, we, we did one thing for a while, and it was good, and it was necessary, but we're hoping to have faith to transition into a new direction. Amen. And I've got written down for us here so we can go to that first slide of Ephesians 1, 17 through 23. And this is a Paul. Uh, Paul is writing this letter here to the uh, Ephesians, the church of Ephesians. And he's giving us here in this passage a prayer. And I've always thought that this is a powerful prayer. And so we're going to read this and, uh, and then I'm going to kind of break it down and we'll digest it a little bit. But uh, let me turn around. It's a nice big screen here we can see. So let me read this for us. It says, uh, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable 
Everybody say immeasurable. All right. Greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. Amen. So there is our text for today. So I'd like to go ahead and and break that down. There's a lot of meat there. Amen. So the church, like I've mentioned, is in a rebuilding stage. This is a new stage, and we need to have a new kind of prayer. We need to have a deeper, richer prayer life for the days ahead, not just corporately, but personally for each of us. Amen. So the first part of Paul's prayer is that he says that you need to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. We need to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. So number one, number one to move forward, we need a spirit of wisdom. Amen. So what does that look like? How do you get that? And, and once you do have that, what does it entail? Yeah. So the Bible tells us in Colossians 3.16, that the word of Christ is wisdom for us. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. So those of you that need wisdom, and everybody does, you know, we just came off of two series on how to hear God's voice and renewing the mind. Well, praise God, we need some wisdom, and that comes from knowing the word of of Christ. And as you know that word, then you'll be be able to begin to discern and distinguish and understand and fully be enlightened to the word of truth. Amen. So we need wisdom that we may be able to rightly divide the word, teach the word, counsel each other, know what direction to go into, you know, we can we can see what the Bible tells us on uh, directions for your life, but if you don't have wisdom for that, then you still might not know what uh, direction to go in. Amen. So let's take a look here. So we need wisdom for finances. We need wisdom for our jobs. We need wisdom for our relationships. We need wisdom for every area of our lives that we deal in. There is not a single area that you say, well, I'm good there, or I'm okay there. No, you you need to know that whatever you're facing, whatever kind of situation that you're in, in your life, you will need the wisdom of God. Amen? Uh, I think we can go to the next one. Okay, so here we go. So that was the first one. The second one is that God's blessings flow from wisdom. If you know, you might think that uh, wisdom is this kind of philosophical, high and mighty thing, like, oh, the wisdom of God, you know, but actually it's a very practical thing. God doesn't want his wisdom to be something that's out here, out of touch. You don't know what it is, or you don't really know how to attain it. No, he wants to put it into every aspect of of your life so that it is practical and you can put it to use. Amen. And we're going to see some scriptures here that God's blessings, his provision, his uh, all that, you know, the good things that he has flows out of knowing how to apply his wisdom. We're going to look at Proverbs here. Amen. Proverbs, I've got two verses here. Proverbs 24, 14. I'm reading out of the ESV. It tells us the wise will inherit, what? Inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. Well, I'm sorry, we've got three scriptures here. So the first one is Proverbs 3, 35, which tells us the wise will inherit honor, but the fools get disgrace. So as you apply the wisdom of Christ, you inherit his honor. Jesus, you you don't have any honor. We're by ourselves, we're, we've been sinners, you know, we've been disgraced. We've got shame. But as you come to Jesus and have his wisdom operating in you, then you get 
his honor. You get his good name. Amen. So you will inherit honor. Number two, Proverbs 24, 14 now says, know that wisdom is such to your soul. If you find it, there will be a future. Amen. Everyone say future. And your hope will not be cut off. I love that last part. When you apply the wisdom of God, the spirit of wisdom, your hope will not be cut off because there's always an an everlasting hope. There's always another door. There's always another avenue. There's always another path. There's always another way that he can work something in you and through you. Amen. It also says there that there will be a future for you. Your hope will not be cut off. Proverbs 8, 17 through 18 tells us, I love those who, this is like the spirit of wisdom talking, right? I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently Amen. There's a good word. Diligently find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. So as you seek the wisdom of God, as you seek the word of God, as you seek the counsel of the Most High, there's riches in that. And I believe this is physical as well as spiritual. There's honor in that. That's the second time we've seen honor. And there's wealth and righteousness. So as we are entering into a new age, a new era, even, you know, not just corporately, but personally, we need to know the wisdom of God and have the spirit of wisdom. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. All right. The number two thing here that Paul says is that we need the spirit of revelation. So the spirit of revelation. So there's the wisdom of God, but then even more uh, fine-tuned You know, fine-tuning is the spirit of revelation. You can have like a general wisdom, but when the the Holy Spirit gives you revelation on a matter, that's that's even deeper than his wisdom, amen? So let me give you uh, an example. It says, uh, we need fresh revelation of the word and of the spirit. The purpose of the spirit of revelation is to have our eyes enlightened. Amen. So that's what I'm talking about. When you have your eyes, your eyes are enlightened on the matter. That's not just a a general wisdom. That's a specific word for you. That's a specific thing that you know. Oh, now I see that. Now I understand that. Now I comprehend that. Here's an example. When I was, uh, I guess it was two weeks ago, my school, we stopped at a, a family member's house of one of the moms of the kids that was there. And uh, this mom has cancer. So we all went there to pray for her. And I told her, I said, you need to find a revelation on healing for your life. You need to find some scriptures and personally yourself get a hold of the truth of God's word and let it speak to you. You can hear what I say all day long, but if you don't apply it yourself and get some revelation yourself on the matter, you're not going to see any change happen. We've all heard Kim's great story of how she was, uh, you know, fainted a lot. She was, she had the uh, hypoglycemic uh, issues going on. She was fainting, had these troubles going on. Well, God gave her a revelation that she shall walk and not faint. Amen. That's a revelation. That's the spirit of revelation that I'm talking to. So, you know, yesterday's sermons were good. Yesterday's uh, miracles were good. Yesterday's revelation was good, but God wants to give you new wine in a new wine skin for today because yesterday won't cut it anymore. We need a new wine, a new revelation for a new wine skin. Amen. I love today that the spirit of God is pouring out across the world. I'm seeing, uh, anybody seen about the Asbury revival, right? We saw about two weeks of revival happening at that campus and not just there. We've seen other campuses across the U.S. I've seen Nicaragua had people being baptized in the ocean, like thousands of people. The Philippines, we're seeing God being pour out his spirit in a new way and on a new generation. Amen. People that are hungry for a move of God, people that are hungry for the spirit of God, for that spirit of revelation. Amen. 
Amen. And even just, uh, I think about a week ago, Franklin Graham was preaching in Vietnam of all places. You know, they're still a nation as well. So in him speaking there, that's a powerful thing. And I'm glad to see that those kinds of things are starting, that the chains are starting to, to break and get rattled up a little bit. Amen. So we see here that we need a spirit of wisdom. We need a spirit of revelation and that our eyes may be enlightened. What is the purpose of that, which is the hope of your calling. You need the spirit of wisdom. You need the spirit of revelation so that your eyes can be enlightened. Why Why so? For the hope of your calling. Amen. So it says that you may know what is the hope to which you are called. Uh, so number one, we need a new understanding, a new revelation, a new uh, uh, vision for our identity in Christ Jesus. You know, we we often identify ourselves as what we do. We work at a restaurant, we're a lawyer, we're a teacher, professor, you know, whatever it is that you do, you often find identity in that. You, you are a uh, pastor or, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, have some kind of a ministry that you do that sometimes you get wrapped up in that identity and you need to start having a new revelation for a new age that your identity is not in what you do, but in whose you belong to, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. All of us today, no matter how much money we got, no matter what our sex is, no matter how old we are, no matter where we're from, what background we have, every one of us that has called Jesus Lord has an identity as a son or daughter in him. Amen. So we need a new hope in that. Number two, we need a revelation of hope. A radical faith is built on hope. I think uh, we're still, yeah, we're still there. Yeah, yeah, there we go. You can see it on there. So a, a radical faith is not, uh, as, as Kim was saying last week, it's not something that just instantaneously happens. Radical faith is built on hope. Hope. You need your imagination like we talked about. We need to marry that to hope, and that builds faith. That's the, that's the birthing place of faith. Amen? You can't move a mountain just first off. You need to have a faith to do that. you got to develop the lever, as you will. Like a, if you see a construction place, you see the backhoe and you see the crane and all the different things. Well, some, you know, you sometimes you got to have a strong uh, piece of equipment to move some mountains. Amen. So we got to develop that and get to that place of radical faith. Okay, so there we go. So the point of a spirit of wisdom, the point of spirit of revelation, the point of knowing your hope in him is to get now to the next part, which is the immeasurable greatness of his power. And I, I think it's, uh, it's really interesting that Jesus, and you can see the picture here from the chosen, Jesus spent three years with his disciples, teaching them, giving them wisdom, giving them revelations on the kingdom of God, giving them insight to uh, what the kingdom of God was, you know, uh, kind of blessing them and helping them go out and, and practice the ministry and do the works of the ministry. Well, he spent three years building all of this in them and, and, and putting this into them. So before the Holy Spirit came, before the fire of God fell, he had to build them up. He had to keep growing their faith he had to keep inspiring them by works of miracles that he would do so that they would be then ready and prepared for the fire of God, the Holy Ghost, to fall on Pentecost. They had to get to a certain level. They had to get to a certain place. So sometimes I hear preachers say, you know, just go out and believe God for the mountain now. Well, sometimes you got to you got to believe for the, the molehill before you can believe for the mountain. I'm not trying to diminish anybody or anything here, but sometimes, and, and sometimes you, you can just, you know, go for it. But 
but you better have a word from God on that. But for most people, you know, you got to start for believing for this microphone to be moved first. And then you can believe the next thing after that. And then you can believe for the next thing after that. But God wants, the Bible says here that he wants to show you his immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe. Well, how many believers? Raise your hand. Your believer, raise your hand. Okay, you qualify for God's immo- immeasurable greatness of his power. I love that verse. Amen. So you need to say to yourself, I qualify for God's immeasurable greatness of his power. Amen. I'm going to have a few more points here and then we're going to we're going to close. I don't want to take too long, but I hope that this is helping someone today. You know, the Bible goes on after that and it starts to talk about all the different ways that Jesus has victory in this life. It doesn't say that you or I have victory. It says that Jesus has victory, but we all know that because of his victory, we have victory. The, the you know, power and authority go from the top down. It doesn't go the other way around. So we're going to look at some, some of these statements that Paul gives here. There we go. The, um, can we go back up to the first slide? No, I'm sorry, the third one. Third one. Uh, next one up. So I'm counting, I'm counting the title slide. Uh, this one. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so we see here. According to the work that uh, he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So there's the first one that Paul wants us, the first immeasurable greatness of his power. Paul wants to illustrate to us that Jesus is seated in a place of authority and power in heaven. And the church, you and I, are. the Bible tells us that you and I are seated there with him. Spiritually speaking, we're all seated right here in these chairs, but spiritually, you and I are on an equal status. Not because of what we have done or can do or how great we are, but because Jesus paid the price and shed his blood. And now the church has the rights to sit in a place of authority at his right hand. So come on, we need to be using his authority that he has already paid dearly for. So going on here, it tells us that he is far, far I think even in Chinese, far means far. Amen. So far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. The Bible says that Jesus said that we can use his name when we pray. We should pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that you have the rights to the name of Jesus. It's like Elon Musk signs you a blank check and he's got his name on there. All you need to do is fill in however many zeros you want to put on that check. I know we don't use checks anymore, but hopefully the idea still comes across. Amen. If if Mr. Musk put his name on a blank check and gave it to you, you would know, oh, I've got some power now. I've, you know, I can, I've got the rights to, to Tesla. I've got the rights to Twitter or, you know, whatever. I can go to the moon now because I got his rocket ship program. I, I don't even know, but the point is, is that Eric shaking his head like, what in the world? <laughs> Amen. The point is, is that Jesus has given you his name. He's in everything that is tied to that. His power, his authority, his ability, his honor, his riches, his righteousness. Come on, you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we need to get a hold of the name of Jesus. Number one, the next one is he put all things under his feet. So right now the church, you know, sometimes I look at the church and I I just wonder, you know, is everything under our feet? I look out at the state of things and the way things are, and I say, well, there seems to be some disconnect between 
what this is saying and what's in reality. So we need to get back to that spirit of wisdom. We need to get it back to that spirit of revelation because see, those are the building blocks getting us down to this part where we can use the name of Jesus, where we can be in a place where things are under our feet. You know, I remember uh, <clears throat> Robert used to, what, what was it he used to say about something about the devil's new location is the bottom of my shoe or something like that, right? We need to put the devil under our feet. Amen. So I'm going to, to close us there. Just wanted to have a, a, a short, I hope, but impactful message for us today. But let, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for us, and then we'll do some tithes and offerings and have a short time of announcements. But Thank you for watching. We hope your faith is strengthened by today's message. To learn more about Head Pastor Sean and Kim Fleeman, please check them out at imprintinternational.com. Visit us on social media at these options. Pastor Sean's book, Church Media from the Ground Up, is available on Amazon and Kindle app. God bless you and keep you. 上帝保佑。